I've, I've spent a lot of the last 18 months on this channel warning investors that electric vehicle stocks may not have the upside that has already been priced into a lot of these stocks. Tesla, when in late 2022, when I started talking about Tesla discounting their vehicles as a sign that demand was not as high as supply in the EV market, that was when margins started to slide. I have been talking about Rivian's challenges, the, money, the amount of money that they're losing, what a warning it is that they're not building the Georgia facility. I've covered Lucid's production and margins. This week, the big news was that Fisker filed for bankruptcy. And I think this is one of those dominoes falling in the electric vehicle industry that's really going to wake up a lot of investors who have been seeing nothing but upside for electric vehicles. The reality is that electric vehicle manufacturing is a manufacturing business. It lives by the laws of manufacturing, supply and demand, return on invested capital, all of these things that you can somewhat ignore in the software and technology business because the upside is so tremendous. If you make a product that people will like in technology, in software, you're going to be able to make money on it because the incremental cost of selling and distributing that product is basically zero. So there are a lot of businesses that have, have tremendous upside in technology. And a lot of these EV companies have been sold as technology companies but they are actually manufacturing companies. And that's the realization that I think we're getting from the EV market today. That's why EV stocks have collapsed over the past week, have dropped a ton so far in 2024, and are way, way down from their highs in 2021 and 2022. So I wanna to get to the latest news and actually highlight Rivian, which over the past couple of weeks has confirmed a lot of the things that I have been saying about the company that they're not expecting to actually make money or get to positive free cash flow anytime soon. They do need to build that Georgia facility. And eventually that means they will have to sell stock. They will have to dilute shareholders just to fund operations. That's the kind of thing that is bad news when the market is looking for businesses that are generating cash flow, not out asking for more money from shareholders. So I'm gonna give kind of a lay of the land in the EV market and why I'm still concerned about these stocks long-term. My name's Travis William. Thanks for watching Asymmetric Investing. Please subscribe here on YouTube for all my content and thanks to this video sponsor, The Motley Fool. If you go to fool.com slash ASYM, they'll give you their top 10 stocks to buy right now. Let's first get to the Fisker news. Now, this is the word from Fisker. It's actually the company's U.S. unit filed for bankruptcy, but that's essentially the, all, the entire company. So this is from Reuters. Assets between $500 million and $1 billion and liabilities between $1 billion and $10 billion. These are basically just play, placeholders that you use in the bankruptcy process. But they filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy and are looking to sell a lot of those assets to other companies. Don't isn't clear exactly who that, that who that would be because they have been trying to sell assets to other companies in the past. And remember, Fisker was actually outsourcing most of their manufacturing. So so their value would theoretically be in design and IP. And it doesn't it isn't really clear that there's a lot of value there compared to what everybody else is building. But the Fisker filing really shows why it's so important that these companies have high stock prices and high valuations. And I'm going to just rifle through a few of the companies here and what their stock charts look like. Most of them are down pretty significantly. And the problem is when your stock starts to drop and you're getting down to this 5 billion, Rivian was a $10 billion valuation. Some of these companies like Faraday probably have no chance of survival. Canoe may fall in that territory. And even Lucid down nearly 60%, only a five or $6 billion valuation in the US. And here's the problem. The manufacturing business is fundamentally about building a plant, making an upfront investment, and then generating cash from that investment long term. So we saw this in the solar industry. And this is kind of my background to this because it looks very similar in the solar industry a decade or 15 years ago to what the EV industry looks like today. Demand is going up and to the right, but prices are coming down. Margins are coming down. Profitability is coming down. And the problem is you build this plant, you make projections about how many vehicles you're going to be able to produce in the case of the solar industry, how many solar panels you're going to be able to produce, and you project how much you're going to be able to sell those for. The problem with the industry is the sale price of electric vehicles has come down dramatically. Not only Tesla, not only in China, but here in the US, Tesla has reduced prices, GM and Ford have reduced prices. That causes everyone else to react. You either reduce prices or you see a drop in demand. So one of those two things is gonna happen. That's just the way that the laws of supply and demand work. So we've seen margins fall at Tesla. We've seen GM in particular pull back on some of their investments in electric vehicles saying, you know what, we're going to wait a little bit longer. We'll 
push off some of these investments, hopefully save a little bit of money and just focus on our cash generating business. Rivian doesn't have the same choice. They're pushing ahead, but they're saying, you know what? We need to upgrade our facilities because we need to actually lower our operating costs. The problem with that was they were upgrading those facilities that were supposed to be profitable as they were building out their Georgia facility that was gonna ultimately get them to the scale that it would require to get to profitability long-term as a business. You see the same thing for Lucid. They've never gotten to the scale that they need to get to to actually operate as a profitable business because if those margins are coming down, sales are not as high as you're expecting both on a per unit basis and on a units sold basis. That just breaks your economics of this investment that is usually multi-billions of dollars to build the plant in the first place. This is how manufacturing companies fall apart. You don't get the return on capital from that first plant that you're investing. So then investors eventually say, why would I give you the money to build a second plant or a third plant if there's no return on investment from the first plant? And this is the conundrum that a lot of these companies are running into. I want to highlight Rivian specifically because this is a company that I've covered a lot here recently. I get a lot of pushback when I say that Rivian's economics don't justify the stock price that we have today. And the CFO explicitly said that they are going to need to raise additional capital to fund the Georgia plant if they ever get to the point where they build that because they are not going to make money in the normal Illinois facility. Thanks to our friends at The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash ASYM for the top 10 stocks to buy right now. This is a recent exchange that CFO Claire McDonough had with an analyst at a recent investor conference. And I think this whole thing is really important to, to read, so I'm gonna leave it up here for a second. But the analyst asks about capital and capital allocation. What is your latest thinking on the Georgia facility? When would spending there be needed? Claire McDonough says, we haven't given specifics around the timing for that investment, they're continuing to look at the broader capital markets. That means basically the stock price and the ability to sell debt as to when we think the timing is right to pull the Georgia facility into the longer range production plan. So it's not in the production plans right now because they don't have the capital to build that plant. That's exactly what she's saying. They remain committed to building R2 and R3 in Georgia eventually. But like she said, she's, they're not building that plant right now. The analyst then says, when would you need to raise more capital and what options are you considering? McDonough says, We've said publicly in the past that we have the cash on hand to fund operations through the launch of R2. That is going to be sometime in the middle of 2026, so about two years from now. We will continue to be opportunistic as, as we assess the broader end capital markets about funding options. Those funding options are selling stock or selling debt. The analyst says, so basically you have enough funding through the first half of 2026, but you would need to be, oppor but you would be opportunistic before that. McDonough says, yes. So what that confirms for Rivian, and I'm using Rivian as an example here because it's one of the most valuable EV makers out there. Outside of Tesla, it's the most valuable of kind of these second tier electric vehicle manufacturers. But the company is still not profitable. It's not sustainable as a business. And they need to raise money to get to that sustainability because that Georgia facility is needed to actually fund their operations long-term. I've talked a lot about this, but Rivian would have to make industry leading margins to be able to be anywhere near free cash flow break even from just their normal normal facility and there's really no indication that they're anywhere new, near doing that they're still losing money on every vehicle that they're making so there's nowhere they're nowhere near a 25 or 30 percent gross margin so i think that's a little ridiculous to think that they're going to get there at that kind of volume but this is where you get into a cash 22 if you're rivian and if you're investors rivian has a 10 billion dollar market cap Let's say that it needs to raise about $5 billion to build the Georgia facility, which it probably needs to raise a little bit more than that because that facility is going to cost about $5 billion and they need to fund operations between the time they start construction and when it's actually completed, which is going to be a few years. So let's say they need to raise $5 billion. When do you do that? Well, you could do that today, but investors probably aren't going to be happy. Let's say the stock drops 20%. So now you get to an $8 billion market cap. You still need to raise $5 billion. Now your market cap is $13 billion. So you've now diluted shareholders to raise that $5 billion. But you've given yourself the runway to actually build the Georgia facility. That would be one option. I think that's probably the best option for Rivian right now is raise that capital right now. What happens if the current trend continues and Rivian stock drops 50% over the next year, and then they say they're gonna go out and raise $5 billion. 
their market cap would be $5 billion. And then they're saying they're going to need another $5 billion. Where in the world is that money going to come from? The stock is not going to react positively to that news. So this is the problem that all of these manufacturing companies have. When you need to raise more capital, investors are going to want to know what is the payoff for giving you that capital. Otherwise, you're going to run into this downward spiral, this downward spiral where you're losing money from operations, you need more money to fund operations, but you can't raise enough money to actually build a build enough scale to get to profitable operations. So you just continue to lose money. And eventually, if your stock goes low enough, the way that Fiskars did, you run out of financial options. And this is the problem for electric vehicle manufacturers. This is the problem for every single manufacturing company, but for EV companies who have never been profitable, never shown that they can generate a gross profit, much less an operating profit, where we're already seeing that demand is lower than production for the EV industry as a whole, I think the huge risk is that all of these companies are gonna run out of financial options. Just like McDonough said, even the best EV companies are going to need to raise capital in the future. And if that option isn't available, what ends up happening is what happened to Fisker this week, they file for bankruptcy. That isn't a popular thing to say, but it's the reality. We have seen this in the renewable energy industry, in the solar industry, in the wind industry, in project development, now in electric vehicles. We're going to see it over and over again. And it's because these companies aren't making money and they don't have a path to do so without more financing. And those capital markets are simply starting to close down to them. That's the reality of the EV market today. Fisker's bankruptcy is a canary in the coal mine, I think. But what do you think? Leave your comments in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to Asymmetric Investing. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you here next time.